Hello and welcome to From No Crypto to No Crypto. This is a cryptocurrency podcast brought to you by Blockchain Wayne. Today's episode is brought to us by Coincierge Club, mobile private key wallet and point of sale solution. Coincierge Club makes purchasing easy, safe, and the overall process more efficient while costing less, helping to make cryptocurrency mainstream. All right, let's take a look at the market update. What is going on in the market update today? Not a whole lot since we talked about it last time, but that is key. The bears and the bulls are fighting it out. Uh, the bears keep trying to push down. But it looks like the bulls are fighting back and have been able to hold above a key level of 7,300, looking to test the resistance of 7,400 very soon. We could see a breakout coming soon by the bulls. And again, that is the best bull sound effect I could find. If you got something better, send it to me. All right, next up. So looking at privacy coins are surging, a possible leading indicator for the crypto market. Uh, private cryptocurrencies are up big over the last 24 hours, being led by Monero and Komodo, two privacy coins. Uh, Bitcoin continued this uptrend, rising close to 3% over the last, give it 24 hours or so but about flat since the last time we did this podcast. Um, it opened around 72.72, floated around there, uh, now sitting around highs around 70, looking to hit 7,400 resistance level. Total cryptocurrency market cap is sitting at 240 billion, right about flat also as at the time of last podcast episode, and Bitcoin dominance has slightly crept up to 53.09% of total cryptocurrency. All right, so moving along, Walmart is selling Bitcoin. Yes, you heard that right. Walmart is selling Bitcoin. Now, they are six for a dollar, and I know a lot of you are scratching your head right now, but what it is is Walmart is selling chocolate Bitcoin coins. It's just chocolate, but it is causing some commotion. A lot of people, a lot of pictures showing up on social media, people taking pictures of these Bitcoin chocolate coins. While they may taste very good, I doubt you'll be able to redeem them for anything unless you're buying something off of a child. All right, six for a dollar, get your Bitcoins at Walmart. So next up, let's take a look at what's going on in the news today. So mobile trading app Robinhood is rolling out candlestick charts to better inform its users, the company announced Tuesday. Now, that just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So after a rollout over the next two weeks, all Robinhood users will be able to see the new chart options, a tool traders use to monitor price activity. For each of the 16 different cryptocurrencies currently listed on the app, along with the other stocks, options, and ETFs offered, a spokesperson had told Coindesk today. Now, this just makes sense. And what happened is Robinhood is saying that they were getting one, at least one to two requests every single day for some kind of candlestick chart, which makes sense. If you're going to make a decision from a mobile app, why not have the tools on that mobile app to make that decision? You don't want to just buy blind. Traders understand when you want to buy in, when you don't want to buy in. So you want to be able to look at the charts to make an informed decision. Uh, all right. So next up, cryptocurrency exchange Shapes, Shapeshift has launched a new membership program that will eventually become mandatory for its users. Now, Shapeshift, I've used it in the past. It's where you can basically send any cryptocurrency to Shapeshift, and then you select what you want it to be converted into, and it will then send you an equivalent amount in the new cryptocurrency you're requesting to your new wallet. So you send it in you, and within a short period of time, you get it back. Now positioned as a loyalty program, the initiative is going to see the startup offer a range of benefits while also moving to start collecting some personal information from its users, essentially forming a pivot away from its exchange without accounts model. So kind of funny in a blog post, the CEO, Eric Voorhees had wrote that, the, that last detail sucks in reference to the plan to make the membership program mandatory, which will take place sometime later this year. Uh, also stating nothing that we would prefer if the collection of personal information was not a mandatory element. However, that seems to be the case as you look at future regulations, future crackdowns on cryptocurrency and money laundering. Uh, you know, it looks like Shapeshift is just doing what they have to do to stay relevant and to you know, meet the requirements or future requirements that will be imposed. All right, next up, so Bitcoin Dark. Bitcoin Dark has mysteriously surged over 277%. It's a suspected pump and dump scheme, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about pump and dump 
in the cryptocurrency education corner. Uh, but Bitcoin Dark has been around, you know, since 2014. It's seen its price surge today from 20 to about $100 in a matter of hours. And then correcting at the time of writing this down, it was at $80. The Bitcoin Dark team had already moved, the entire team moved to the development of Komodo, a cryptocurrency that I mentioned earlier, which is surging today. Uh, you know, cryptocurrency that's currently trading at $1.61 after rising 16% in the last 24 hour period. Komodo uses a consensus mechanism as team developed called delayed proof of work and uses Zcash zero knowledge proofs to make transactions anonymous. So what is behind this, this pump in Bitcoin dark? Apparently it could be a pump and dump. Like I said, I will explain that a little bit more in the crypto education section of this podcast. All right, so Firefox founder uh, was in the news today talking about why the Brave browser couldn't use Bitcoin and instead had to switch to BAT, which is your basic attention token. Uh, you know, when Brave launched, it was, it was using Bitcoin, but then over time, it switched to the basic attention token. And what it is, it's, you know, Brave browser demonstrated rapid growth through 2018, 10 million downloads on the Google Play Store. Um, you know, Brave has constantly partnered with publications and publishers such as YouTube and Twitch streamers to reward content creators with payments made through cryptocurrency. Using Bitcoin, as the, you can imagine, as this platform grew, Bitcoin was not scaling at the same speed. So Bitcoin, it was slow. A lot of people weren't interested in holding Bitcoin at the time. So they switched to the basic attention token, but they also give contributors the option to to be paid in fiat currency as well. If you haven't tried the, brow the Brave browser, I recommend you download it. I just downloaded it not too long ago on my Android phone. It's a great, great browser, extremely fast, a lot of pop-up blockers, perfect. You get to choose the content you want to see. And it is, you know, built around the basic attention token. Uh, now, most recently in the news also, a little bit more about BAT is Coinbase has announced discloses plans to integrate BAT into ex exchange as one of its first ERC-20 tokens on the platform. So interesting to see what that's going to happen. You may want to keep an eye on BAT as this one could potentially see a spike up. So moving along to our crypto education corner. So let's start by talking about uh, something I posted on my face on the Facebook page from no crypto to no crypto today. It is a YouTube video of Gary V's speech as a keynote speaker at the Chain Exchange Conference. You know, in that in that video, he talks about the future of blockchain and cryptocurrency. It's a must listen to video. It's only about 20 minutes long. And the best advice he gave was instead of wasting your time and energy arguing with doubters and haters about the future of crypto and blockchain, spend that time working on your craft and improving yourself. Uh, he chalked it up to the similar experience. It, it's pointless to argue. It's like arguing over who's going to win a basketball game when the final score is going to reflect who's right with or without the argument. So he gave some great references when it came to that. He talked, he compared, you know, cri cryptocurrency and blockchain, the, those tech movements, he compared them to the adoption of the internet. And then again, the adoption of social media, both of which he participated in. And in the beginning of both of those, they were met with lots of skepticism. Many people said the internet was a fad. Many people said social media was a fad. It wasn't going to catch on, but we both know what's happened with those. And that's what we're seeing happen with cryptocurrency and blockchain. One of the things he also mentioned is many of the people that got in early in cryptocurrency and may have made millions or not quite millions, but made huge returns last year or in prior years. You know, that that's great and all. And it's, it's a great thing that he mentioned to be able to have that under your belt, but when you brag about it, keep in mind, there's a lot of people that got into cryptocurrency between December and early part of this year. Many people that may have bought say Bitcoin or many other cryptocurrencies that have lost, you know, 50, 75, 90% of their value. Many people are sitting upside down, you know, don't go into any kind of investment with anything that you're not comfortable losing, but you know, people are still holding those and people are hurting and, and we've got to continue to educate people on the true nature of this space, not just hype, not just getting lucky by getting in on timing, because not everybody can get in on timing, but a lot of people can still benefit because we are still early in this game. So definitely check out that video, Gary Vee's speech uh, at Chain Exchange. So today's Crypto Education Corner, we're gonna take a little detour. Normally, 
the last few episodes, I've been talking about top cryptocurrencies with working products, and I'll get back to that in the next episode. But today, I want to revisit uh, revisit a topic I talked about early on, just because a lot of people may not have heard that episode, and also talk about something else, which I mentioned earlier, which is pump and dump schemes. So we're going to look at ICO scams and pump and dump schemes, two things to be aware of as you get involved in the cryptocurrency space. So let's start with pump and dump. Yeah, it may sound like something that you would hear from a commercial about the squatty potty, but that is not it at all. Pump and dump is basically when you have a group that collaborates together to create buying and selling action that, that falsely drives the price of a cryptocurrency up. And as that's the pump, and what happens is once it hits an agreed upon point, they all dump it and sell it before it crashes. Now that may sound innocent, no harm, no foul, but think about this. Whenever there is a seller, there's always a buyer and vice versa. So somebody is seeing this cryptocurrency rising really fast, thinking, oh man, this thing's going up. I want to get to be a part of that. So they buy at the peak and then the pump and dump group dump it, which causes it to drop. Now, you may say, what's the point of investing if, that's, if that can happen? They usually target cryptocurrencies that have very low trading volume because it is easier to manipulate the price of, of those cryptocurrencies because it has extremely low trading volume, which is why we saw today Bitcoin dark, which has kind of been stagnant, all of a sudden have a huge, huge pump and then a dump. So just be aware of those. That's the time when you want to make sure you avoid that FOMO feeling, the fear of missing out. You see a cryptocurrency going to the moon and you're like, okay, I want to get a piece of that, but it's already spiked and you're buying at the top and you're about to get hurt pretty bad. So be aware of those. Like I said, somebody is always hurt. Some bought at the peak. So make sure you, you know, avoid being sucked into those pump and dump schemes because there is always, always a loser. All right, ICOs. Next thing we want to talk about ICO, which is an initial coin offering. So I'm bringing this up again because there's been a lot in the news lately about ICO, uh, ICO scams, and a lot of different things going on in the ICO space. So first and foremost, celebrity celebrity endorsement should not hold any weight with you when it comes to whether or not you should invest in a cryptocurrency. Now, whether your favorite rapper or boxer is endorsing an ICO doesn't matter. What would it matter if Kim Kardashian is endorsing an ICO? Even if it's a fashion ICO, what does she really know about cryptocurrency? And what are what is that celebrity's crypto credentials? Probably none, and they're probably being paid in cash. So really don't jump into an ICO just because a celebrity's endorsing it. We're seeing quite a few lately where they've turned out to be scams. Now, I'm not saying that the celebrity had knowledge that it was a scam, but they were sucked into it as well use their name to lure other people in. And also a reminder, something I've mentioned in a past episode, a very interesting site that you can go to. It's called HowieCoins.com. Now what HowieCoins, H-O-W-E-Y-C-O-I-N-S.com, was a site that was put together by the SEC to educate people about ICO scams. So take a look at their site. It shows you what a typical ICO scam mm -hmm. website will look like. Uh, it has countdowns, pre-sales, referrals, celebrity endorsements, all these things we're talking about. When you're looking into a, a, an ICO, the best advice I can give you is do your own research and don't base your research off of reading one bit of information. You want to get multiple sources of information. Diversify where you're getting information from, right? Many of these ICOs that are legitimate are launching. They have telegram groups to keep people in, up to date. So, Check that out. Check out the frequently asked questions. Read the white paper of that ICO cryptocurrency. Research the development team. Most ICOs, at least the legitimate ones, will give you the names and credentials of the development team, who's behind the company, who's behind the technology, and do some research on that. I looked into one not too long ago where you know the CEO of the company who had all these credentials cannot be found on LinkedIn or on Google search or anywhere. He was a ghost and keep, keep in mind these successful people that have experience will show up somewhere. They leave a digital trail. We all leave a digital trail. So you should be able to find some information and think about this. Even legitimate ICOs have had their share of problems. So don't invest more than what you're willing to lose. I've seen some that have come out and, and gone, gone up high and we've seen five, 10, 20 times your return on investment or more 
from an ICO, but I've also seen some that have come out and dropped below the ICO price. Mm -hmm. So just be aware you're going to have problems no matter what. So make sure uh, you look into those things. Also, will that ICO, will that token have a working product that will, that will have demand? One thing I recently, I'd recently had a friend send this to me and then it's actually in the news in the last couple of days about a cryptocurrency. It's an ICO that's going to be backed by gold from a sunken ship that has been found and needs to be pulled and recovered from the ocean. First red flag is how's that token going to be used? I get it. The value of the token can be backed by the gold pulled from a ship. Supposedly, if that was a legitimate case, ended up being a scam coming out of Korea, I believe South Korea. But anyway, how would that token take that back? Say, say there really was a ship with gold. What's the use case behind that token? Is there any? So what's the point of it, right? So remember the whole point of cryptocurrency, you want to have a working product that will help to move technology forward. So DYOR, you're going to hear that a lot. Do your own research. It's, it's the biggest key to deciding whether or not to participate in ICO. But a little bit of information, there is a section. If you go to coincheckup.com, coincheckup.com, where you can look at many different indicators on current cryptocurrencies, they do have an ICO tab. And you can click on that ICO tab. It will give you information about that ICO, when the date is, what the current price is. They even give it a review rating for each ICO, a review score, I guess you could call it. So now again, let me re reiterate, never base your decision solely off of another research. So don't go off, just because coin checkup says it has a good score. It looks like it could be good. They're going off for their own research. Do your own as well. Just use this as a tool, as a complimentary piece of insight to make that decision. So that is it for our crypto education corner today. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, really passionate about making sure people are protected and stay away from any of these scams. Anything that sounds too good to be true probably is. So make sure you do your research. Uh, all the news articles we talked about today can be found on our Facebook page from no crypto to no crypto. If you haven't already, make sure to give it a like. Also, when you click the follow button on our Facebook page, it will pop up with the option where you can click see first. Make sure you do that so you never miss an update, never miss an episode. And also, if you're looking for a little bit more information or a handful of resources to point you where you can learn more in this cryptocurrency journey, have a book for sale on Amazon under the same name from no crypto to no crypto. It's a beginner's guide to cryptocurrency, a simple 40 page read that gives you the basic resources you would need to get started and where to find the information you need to get started in that cryptocurrency journey. So that is it for our episode today. Thank, every, thank you everybody for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.